Hey Magic fans, welcome back. This is your captain speaking. We're back for Modern Horizon 2 spoilers again. We got a little a little over 30 to go over this time, so I'm gonna make it quick. I don't want to hold you guys up too much, but before we get started, remember, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, put some comments down there, feed that algorithm for YouTube so I can get this little support for my channel by this popping up in people's views so those who haven't seen my channel before can get a little insight. Really do appreciate it. So Buckle up, put your tray tables and your seat backs in their full upright and locked position because this is your captain speaking and we're heading in to Modern Horizons 2. So first thing we have here, we have a flying demon, two blue, two cuddless. It's an artifact creature demon, so it's an artifact. It flies and its power is equal to the number of artifacts you control. So basically, it starts off as a 1-3 and if you have any other artifacts, this thing just goes up from there. So uh, for the mana cost and so forth, uh, probably not going to be a thing in Modern. Um, probably would be great in draft, especially with the heavy artifact theme that seems to be in the set, uh, especially since it flies. So, uh, all in all, decent card. Moving on, we have a new god of sea and sky. So, I'm not even going to try to try to announce that name because I'll just butcher it. So, for two blue and a cuddle, you have a legendary creature, merfolk god. If you control two other merfolks, it is indestructible, and when it attacks, you draw a card. Other merfolk you control have ward one. This is an amazing card. Three mana for a 3-4 gives all your creatures protection, plus draws you cards, and it's a merfolk. So I got some theories about Modern Horizons 2 and where wizards are going to go with these new archetypes and bringing back old archetypes and tribals. Uh, but that's something for another video, and we'll talk about that then. But this, definitely going to see some modern play, especially maybe bring back some merfolk decks. And of course, in Sealed, this is a powerhouse. So moving on. Next, we have Vecatus Gloves. It's a two casting cost artifact that equips for two and gives the creature plus two, plus zero, oh, and artifact land walk. So if you remember way back in the day, we had artifact lands. They all got banned. Um, and this is a land walk ability for those artifact lands. But what does that mean? Could there be more artifact lands in this set to make this worthwhile? I think you guys know the answer, but we'll take a look at that later. As we move on, we have the Phantasmal Dreadmaw. It's a 2 blue, 2 cuddle, a 6 6 illusion that has trample. And like all the illusions in blue, if you target with a spell or ability, you have to sacrifice it. So, not going to see modern plagues. It's too easy to target things. It will always die. But, but in draft, this will be a powerhouse and will be a, the, a definite top tier pick for having an amazing card in blue. Next, we have the Ghost Lit Errant. Uh, this is a blue and 2 cuddle list for a creature spirit with flying. For a blue and two, you give another target creature flying to the end of turn. That's pretty sweet. And it has an ability called Channel, where for blue and X, you discard the card. And for X mana, which is what you spend, X target creatures gain flying to the end of their turn. So probably not going to be a thing in, in Modern, uh, just because it's three mana for two, two flyers. Very undervalued cost-wise. The special abilities don't do that much. But it will be a really good card, I think, in Draft. Because two three mana for a two, two flyer is really good. But at the same time... There are a lot of flyers in, in the Modern Horizons set, so I don't know how well this evasion tactic will work. Um, but it's definitely something to consider and, and, and to pick. Moving on, we have General Ferodius Ro Rokarik, I think is how you pronounce it. So red, white, and a cuddleless. We have a legendary Veacher. Vereacher? Interesting. Creature. Good, good way to describe that. Anyway... So, Human Soldier, it has Hexproof from Monocolor. So, that alone is going to make this a real big problem in Modern because all the removal spells are mostly Monocolor. Uh, I mean, you do have things like Helix, Rip Apart, and stuff like that, but not all decks are running those in starters. They, they rely morally on, morally on, like, Lightning Bolt, you know, um, Push, things like that. All Monocolor, one-mana spells which this guy has protection from. And if you cast another multicolor spell with him, you create a 4-4 red and white golem artifact creature. If you lay him and lay one spell for four mana, you get a 3-1 and a 4-4. That is amazing. This could be one of the best rares that we may see. Um, however, I don't know what deck it'll go in. It's probably going to have to be its own new deck just because you have to cast multicolor spells. And like I mentioned before, that is kind of rare um, in modern, especially in red-white. So keep that in mind, guys. 
But I do think he's something to watch. Obviously, in draft, he's a powerhouse. Next, we have Soul Snare. So for a white, you can lay an enchantment. And then for a white, you can sacrifice it and exile a target creature that's attacking you or a planeswalker you control. This is basically the best possible source to plowshares on a one-for-one -one basis. Yes, it takes a two-white investment, but you can lay this on turn one and let it sit on the table, leave a white open, and scare your opponent into never attacking with a creature they have for fear of it being exiled. This is a great way to hold your opponent off. And since it's an enchantment you put on the table, there's not many things that deal with enchantments main board um, in most decks in modern. So by putting it on a table, you really avoid one of modern's big haymakers in all the discard that gets ran. And with it being on the table, they can't make you discard it. And if they make you discard it, that means they normally in black can't deal with artifact or artifacts or enchantments. So I think this will be a powerhouse, definitely sideboardable, maybe even main deckable in modern. And of course in draft, this is just huge. Next we have Gaia's Will. Once again, this card does not have a casting cost. This is a flat suspend card only for four. So after, for those of you who don't know, you, you pay one green, you suspend it, put four counters on it. You take a counter off every upkeep. When you have zero counters on it, on that upkeep, you can cast it for free. And until end of turn, you may play lands and cast spells from your graveyard. Any cards that go to the graveyard while this card has, after this card has been cast for the turn are exiled instead. This is basically Yawgmoth's Will. If anybody played back in the day of Yawgmoth's Will, when you could, for a black and two, play anything in your graveyard, this is the same thing. It's just got a counter of four turns to wait on it, which means during those four turns, you can really waste the stuff out of your hand to get this to actually fire off and cast all those spells again. Because notice it says spells. That's anything. That's creatures. That's anything you want. And you can play a land, too, for the turn. This, I think, as a rare, is going to be a powerhouse. And, and you'll notice here how it's got this little, like, mirror-looking shape in it, and someone's looking through it, and it's changing. Uh, I think there's going to be one of these for every color. I've seen a red, a red one earlier, and I didn't think too much about it, but now that I see this one, there may be one of these for every color, so that's something to watch out for. And also, too, with no casting costs, it's so easy to abuse a free cast on this that this could actually get out of hand quick. So moving on, next thing we have is the Junk Winder. It's two blue and five colorless for a 5-6. Uh, it has affinities for tokens, believe it or not, which means that for every token you have in play, it costs one less to cast. Uh, if token enters the battlefield, you can tap an online permanent that the opponent controls and doesn't untap during the next untap step. Um, that's really cool, especially in a token deck, but blue don't generate lots of tokens normally. Um, at least not anything that's really good in modern. Um, so as far as Draft goes, this is probably going to be halfway decent because it's a big creature, though it does cost seven. Uh, but if you get some uh, some tokens to kind of fuel it, that'd be awesome too. Um, all in all, it's a, it's a decent uncommon. But I don't see this getting a whole lot of play uh, just because it takes too much thing, too many things to get this going. Moving on next, we have uh, another reprint. We have the Seal of Cleansing. Once again, white and a cuddleless. So enchantment sits on the board, and it's basically a disenchant that you get to sacrifice the enchantment to get the disenchant effect. Um, I think we're going to see a lot of these reprints probably. This is the very first one or second one I've already covered. Um, I know I've at least seen another one that I'm getting ready to cover today, so be ready, guys. All these seals are probably coming back. Next, we have the Quirion Ranger. For one green, we have the Elf Ranger. That's a 1-1, one, one, and you return a force to, that you control to its owner's hand and untap a target creature. You go and activate this ability once each turn. Uh, this is a mainstay and main player in Elf Ball and Legacy. Now it's being printed into Modern to really help out those Elf decks. Uh, and once again, this kind of goes to my theory of where I think Wizards are going to be kind of going with Modern in the future. But like I said, that's going to be another video, another conversation. Uh, and once we get all the spoilers for Modern Horizons 2, I'll have that talk with you guys and kind of give you what I think. So, moving on. Next here we have Disapprove. It's a blue and a colorless enchantment. It has flash. When it enters the battlefield, you get to draw a card. Also, when it enters the battlefield, creatures lose all their abilities. And at the beginning of the next end step, you have to sacrifice it. So it's a decent way to stop something from happening. Um, it replaces itself. I don't see this being a mainstay in modern. It's two mana. It doesn't actually kill anything. All it does is draw a card. Um... So I'm sure it probably has a niche somewhere, but I really don't. This is probably looks more like a bulk rare to me. So moving on. Guess what, guys? They're 
reprinting Imperial Recruiter again. So this art, though, is pretty sweet. Got to admit. So red two colors for the 1-1 one, one Imperial Recruiter. If you don't know what he does, you search your library for a creature card power two or less, reveal it, put it into your hand, and shuffle. This used to be a very expensive card back in Portal and Three Kingdoms. Uh, it's been reprinted a couple times now, and now it's getting reprinted again in Modern Horizons 2. Um, so it's really going to drive the price down some more, probably. At least it is a Mythic. Uh, I think what's really going to be valuable about this card is the alternate art on it. So, as always, this is already a thing in Modern. There's no need to talk about that. And in Draft, it could be good depending on how your deck's built. So, moving on. Oh, good old Tormod. Where house hast thou been? So, this is Tormod's Crypt Keeper. Um, it's three colorless for a 3-2. Not too bad. And it has Vigilance, which is interesting on an artifact creature. But anyway... Uh, you sacrifice it, and you exile all cards from target player's library, just like Tormod's Crypt for zero. Uh, the difference in this one is it's a 3-2 for three creature that you can beat him in the face with until you need to use him. And since he has Vigilance, you don't have to worry about not being able to use him because you've attacked with him. Because he's always untapped, and he has to tap to sacrifice. So I think this is really cool. I don't think it's going to see play just because Tormod's Crypt's way more um, mana light, more, more deck friendly. Um, and it's activatable the turn that you play it. This has to wait until it's not summoning sick, plus it's a creature. It can be killed easy. Don't think it's going to see play, but probably will be a pretty sweet draft card. So here we have Galvanic Relay in the old frame. Pretty sweet looking. Red 2, Cuddleless Sorcery, Exile top card of your library. During your next turn, you may play that card, and this has Storm. So yes, more Storm cards, which are what players hate. Now, will this see play? I don't really think so. Um, it may see play in Storm decks as a way of buffering and setting up for the next turn. Um, because if you play four or five spells and then play this and flip over like six cards that you can play the next turn, it will easily f fuel your deck so that you win on the next turn. But is that is winning on the next turn guarantee better than just winning on the current turn with cards that could already be in the place of this? Hard to say. Um, it is a common. I really don't think it's going to take any. I don't think it's going to see any storm play per se. But who knows? Maybe somebody can find a way to break it in modern. Moving on, we have st step through. So this is two blue, three colors for not, for a common. Return two target creatures to their owner's hands, and it has wizard cycling for two. Yeah, basically what that means is you cycle this, go get a wizard, um, put it in your hand. So, eh. I mean, it might be niche in some EDH decks or whatever, but it is a common. I don't see it doing much. Definitely for five mana, it's not going to see play, and there's no reason to wizard cycle in modern right now. So, moving on, we have the Arcbound Mouser. That's right, we have the new Arcbound. It's not a Ravager. Uh, it's one white, though, so it's not colorless. Uh, it has lifelink and modular one. Also, no sacrifice abilities or anything, so just an okay common. Uh, probably good for draft. Probably won't see anything in, in modern. Next, we have Bone Shard reprint. So the, in case you don't know, Bone Shards is for you have to sacrifice a creature, discard a card, and destroy target creature Planeswalker for one black. Uh, very good card. Won't see modern play for the simple fact that it's not mana efficient or resource efficient because of sacrificing of creatures and discarding a card. Um, we'll see draft play because it is a good removal spell. So there you have it. Moving on. All right, we have a new common called the Rift Sower. Uh, this is an Elf Druid for a green 2 colorless. It has tap at 1 mana of any color. Uh, it's a 1-3, but it does have suspend 2, which means on turn 1 for 1 green you can suspend it, and in 2 turns get a 1-3 that taps for mana, uh, which is almost the same as casting it on the same turn, basically. So, no thank you. Moving on. Here we go, guys. Glimpse of Tomorrow. As I mentioned, this is the red one with the circle. So in Glimpse of Tomorrow, again, no casting cost, suspend, it's 2 red and 3. It says, shuffle all permanents you own into your library, then reveal that many cards from the top of your library, put all non or permanent cards revealed this way onto the battlefield, then do the same for aura cards, then put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So this just says shenanigans all over it. Um, it's hard to say how you could break this. I mean, you could easily put this into a ramp or a, top, or a escape shift deck. And just go berserk with lands and everything else in God's Green Earth and having just one creature um, that just pulls it all together. I mean, you almost could cast this with a Scapeshift 
you know, as a way to get more lands out of your deck and so forth and so on. Like, there, there's tons of possibilities with this. Tons of combos. Uh, I'm not even going to list them all right now. I'm just going to say that this is going to see some play. Next, we have whatever the hell that name is. Asmora Nana Borda Kakaduka Bukasuki Kakaluka Car. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, the name's so big, the casting cost is on the card, so apparently it doesn't have one. Uh, so what that means is, this is a rare, it's a 3-3 wizard, legendary. It says, as long as you've discarded a card this turn, you may pay a black or a red to cast this spell. Interesting. Now, when this card enters the battlefield, you may search your library for the card name the Underworld Cookbook. Reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle. You can sacrifice two foods, target creature deals six damage to itself. So this is a very interesting card. Um, I think there's decks that are going to play this because if you discard a card, you can easily pay that mana to cast this spell. And there's all kinds of ways to discard cards, uh, especially from yourself. Um, so yeah, I, I think this is probably going to be a thing, uh, especially once we know we talk, start talking about food and the underworld cookbook. We'll see that later. So, um, am I real big on this? No, not really. Um, do I think it'll see some play? Yeah, probably. Uh, just because. Speaking of the Underworld Cookbook, here it is. It's one cuddleless, and it says, tap, discard a card, create a food token, and then tap four and tap, sacrifice the cookbook to return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So, um, I think I definitely see kind of a Jun sacrifice theme going here in Modern, and it costs one, so it's cheap. So will this see play with that other card and maybe some other shenanigans going on? I definitely think it's going to see some play. Um, it is only an uncommon. I don't think it's going to be worth a whole lot of money, but I think it will be a thing. We'll have to watch out for it. So next here we have the Obsidian Charmall. It's two red and three colorless dragon. It's a 4-4. Four, four. Uh, it costs one less to cast for each land your opponent controls that produces colorless, um, which is interesting. It has flying, and when it enters the battlefield, destroy target non-basic land your opponent controls. So this could be a good card against Tron just because it comes in with Lando. And Tron on turn two has two lands normally that produce Cuddleless. And with you being on turn three, if you go first, you can easily cast this on turn three, blow up one of their lands, and possibly kill them before they can actually get to a real Tron. So this may be a solution to Tron, but to be honest, Tron is awful right now, and nobody really cares. So uh, that is something you can do with it. Uh, I'm sure there might be other decks that rear their ugly head that may have to may you may need to use this for but uh as of right now i don't think it's going to be a big thing uh because it's really going to depend on what your opponent plays because your opponent doesn't play lands to produce colorless you're just paying you're paying five mana for a four four that destroys non-basic lands so i mean that can be good i guess but once again we're talking about modern and this is five mana so eh and of course in draft is a bomb so we have the Arcbound Welt, more Arcbound creatures. It's a red three colorless for a uncommon. That's a zero zero. It has flying, uh, modular two. So actually for four mana you get a two two flyer, and it has fire breathing on it. This seems like a really sweet uncommon. Um, however, because of mana costs and things like that, this is not going to see modern play. But this is going to be huge if you're playing draft with Modern Horizons, if you can afford that. So I think this is a sweet card, and I really wish it was something like this in standard even though it would probably be broke as to all get out just because of the modular and everything else. But this is a pretty sweet card, and I really do like it. All right, so we have Discerning Taste for a black and two colorless. You can look at the top four cards of your library, put one of them into your hand, the rest into the graveyard. You gain life equal to the greatest power among creature cards you put into your graveyard. This is a very interesting card because you could easily put um, Miracle into your graveyard, gain 15 life, then shuffle everything back in and get a card out of the top four at the same time. Um, once again, though, for three mana, it's not going to see modern play unless it becomes part of a, of a big combo deck. That's the only way it's going to happen. Um, and in draft, probably not so big either because everything goes in the graveyard unless you have a graveyard theme. Uh, but as we talked about before, remember we talked about Artifact Landwalk. Here they are, guys. They made a new Artifact Land set. Uh, for every two color combination, uh, except these artifact lands come into play tapped and they are indestructible like normal artifact lands. So, 
Nothing too big to say there. Um, let's hope these aren't as broken as the other artifact lands were. I think because they come into play tap, they probably won't be. But we'll have to see because this could be the thing that makes, you know, Affinity way bonkers on a, a large scale. So let's hope that that's not what happens. We have to ban these two. Uh, here's an extra picture of the blue-green one. I couldn't fit on there and the white-blue one. So moving on, guys. Next, we are out of time. Just kidding. So for out of time, we have two white and a colorless. It's an enchantment. It hits the battlefield. And when it comes into play, you untap all the creatures. You phase them out. They, and they stay phased out until out of time leaves the field. But when out of time comes into play, you put a time counter on it for each creature phased out this way, and this card has vanishing. So what that means is if you cast phase out or out of time for three and there's three creatures on the field, this thing gets three counters on it, and every upkeep you remove a counter. When the last counter comes off, the enchantment vanishes, which means it goes to your graveyard, and the creatures that have been exiled come back into play. Could be a pretty good card uh, for some blink decks, but to be honest, I think there's better blink spells out there. Uh, but it could be a good card for blink decks uh, against other aggro decks so they can also blink and save their life without having to kill their creatures by wrathing. So could be a thing, but we'll see. I bet it's going to be great in EDH. Uh, next, we have Suspend. It's a rare for one blue instant. Exile target creature and put two time counters on it. If it doesn't have Suspend, it gains Suspend. So basically, you suspend a card, it's in play. Or, I'm sorry, you suspend a creature that's in play. Um, for two whole turns, which for blue removal, it doesn't actually remove it, but it, it does give you two or more turns to try to draw something to deal with it or even win the game. So this may actually be a player uh, that comes along that could be pretty good. Next, as we move along, we have Mystic Redaction. So for blue and two colorless, it's an enchantment that at the beginning of your upkeep, you get to scry one, which is pretty sweet. Uh, whenever you discard a card, each opponent mills two cards. Um... Because you have to discard, this is not going to be a thing um, unless there's some weird bonky deck out there somebody wants to make that does that. Uh, now, in a big nappy group game, you know, this is probably going to be pretty sweet. Two-headed giant, pretty sweet. Um, and probably not very good in draft because there's just not that many stuff, not that many things that make you discard. So, still, at least it's not something that's going to take over the format. Eh. So, moving on, we have Sweep the Skies, two blue and X. It has Converge, where you can create a 1-1 colorless Doppler artifact creature token with flying for each color of mana spent to cast a spell. So basically, you can get 5 one, one flyers at best. So, eh. Moving right along, we have Road to Ruin. So Road is a green 2 colorless. Search your library for basic land card, put it on the battlefield tapped. Eh, it's okay. Ruin is deals damage to target creature equal to the number of lands you control for 2 red and 1. Eh, red green is not a big staple in modern. It costs three on each side. It fetches basic land, which most people don't run a lot of basic land. Uh, I don't think it's going to see any modern play. It's only going to be draftable. And it might be a card for EDH that some people might run just for giggles. Because um, it does have some pretty sweet effects on it. Moving on. That's right, guys. You're seeing this correct. They are printing Mishra's Factory into modern i don't know what else to say uh it produces colorless for a colorless mana it becomes a 2-2 artifact worker that's a creature's late in the turn and you can tap uh an assembly worker creature uh you can tap this land to give a creature plus one plus one so if you have four of these out once you activate one the other ones can just make it bigger so you can swing with them uh this is a real game changer for modern having this kind of card in the format again because uh, this was normally only resided to Legacy, but the Legacy power level is so high now, this isn't very good. Uh, so I think they're pulling cards like this back into Modern to reshape Modern uh, to a similar era where uh, Legacy used to be and when it thrived. Once again, though, that's some more theory I have to work on, and we'll talk about that in a later video. So we'll move on, and this is definitely a powerhouse in all formats. So, so Coffee is Reaver. Uh, it's a red and two colorless. It's a 2-3, which ain't too bad. As long as it's your turn, it gets plus 2, plus 0, so it's a 4-3. Eh. Uh, for Madness, you can, for a red and colorless, cast it, which is pretty good. Uh, but once again, not going to see Modern play. Just doesn't do enough. Um, might be decent in draft. So moving on here, we have the Scourge Familiar for black and four. It's a Phyrexian Imp. Has flying. And if you discard a card, you can add one black. So this is going to be one of those cards 
that you know I talked about you could discard. Uh, discard wouldn't be a big thing, but once again, you can only discard so much, only draw so much. So with that said, I don't think this is going to be too much of a powerhouse, uh, but we'll have to wait and see. So moving on. Next we have here, we have Necromancer's Familiar. It's a black and three for a bird spirit. It has flying. It's a 3-1, and if it's hellbent, the familiar has lifelink, uh, which means you have no cards in your hand, so that's not too shabby, I guess. Uh, for a black, you can discard a card. The familiar gains indestructible to end a turn, and it taps it. Um, again, four mana, way too much. Doesn't do enough. Won't see modern play. Pretty good in draft. Um, I don't even think it's going to see EDH play, to be honest with you. So, eh. All right, guys. Here he is. It's Turok, Dread Chandler. Just like Turok's, remember him to Turok and Turok's chant and Turmot's crypt. This is the man. And let's see what he looks like. So for a black and two, he's already in the right casting cost to work in modern. He's a legendary creature human cleric with a kicker of black, black. Hmm, sounds good. He has pro white. That's a bonus. White has a lot of good removal spells. Whenever an opponent discards a card, put a plus one, plus one counter on Turak. That looks sweet. Lots of discard effects in the right colors. This already has a lot of promise, but it also says when he enters the battlefield, if you kicked him, uh, target opponent discards two cards at random. So on turn four, you can play for four mana. You can play him, and if they have two cards to discard, you get a 4-3. Pro-white creature that just gets bigger if they keep discarding. I think this is the bomb. Not only because this has it does a lot, it has lots of power levels, it has lots of different things that it does. It has kicker, you can cast it just for two if you want. You don't have to kick it, just so you can get a pro white guy out there and start beating people in the face and then continue casting your discard spells to keep growing him as the, as the game goes on. He just, this is what a modern staple looks like, and this is going to be a modern staple in some degree. Uh, just... Yeah, I mean, he may not get very high and very expensive because uh, he's not completely game-breaking. But in the right deck, he could be, and it could really drive his price up. So I would really watch out for this guy, for this card, guys. Not only that, EDH deck player is going to want to play this guys on a play this on a regular basics um, because it says when an opponent discards. So any opponent discards, he gets pluses. Like, great multiplayer, sweet in one-on-one. -on -one. This is is just going to be the boss. This is going to be a really good card, guys, so keep an eye on it. So moving on. Dun, da, da, da. It's the first sliver. That's right, guys. Slivers are back, and the first sliver has been reprinted. It has five colors for a 7-7, seven, seven, and it has Cascade, where sliver spells you have have Cascade. In case you guys don't know what Cascade is, Cascade is when you cast a spell, you flip over the top cards of your library one at a time until you find a spell that costs less than the than the spell you cast with Cascade, and then you can cast that spell for free. So think about it, guys. If you get to five mana and you cast this sliver in a sliver deck, you literally can be like, bam, first sliver. Flip some over. Hey, a four-cost sliver. Cast it. Hey, this has Cascade because it's a sliver. Bam. And you can literally pull five or six slivers out of your deck by casting this one sliver card. Not to mention, once it's on the field, drawing another sliver that's really expensive just repeats the effect. Again, this is going to be another $80, $90, $100 card, guys. You know, people love slivers. Uh, is it going to be a modern staple? Probably not, but the card's just sweet. Uh, we got a reprint here, Goblin Bombardment. Good old Gobby Bombardment. So, as usual, it's enchantment. You sacrifice a creature. It deals one damage to any target. Good old Goblin Bombardment reprint. And it's a rare. So, moving on, we have our next reprint. Yep, this is the seal and removal, guys. So, all the seals are probably coming back. Again, for one blue, it's an enchantment. It sits on the field. Uh, return to start creature the owner's hand. Basically, just an unsummon on a stick. Just like the other one was a disenchant on a stick. I'm pretty sure we'll probably see the rest of them at some point to uh, revealed to us. So we have another mythic, guys. It's the Scion of Draco. So this is a 12 colorless casting cost artifact creature dragon. Good lord. But it has domain, which means the spell costs two less to cast for each basic land type among the lands you control. Uh, so... You know, if you have all five land types out, you can cast this for two. But that means you wait to turn five just to get a four four with flying. And for every land type you have out, for example, for white, it has vigilance, hexproof for blue, lifelink for black, first strike for red, trample for green. But with shock lands, 
you can easily cast this on turn three by having all five archetypes. You know, and if you have a little extra mana ramp somewhere in there, you can even cast it on turn two if you have two different colored lands. Or even if you fetch a Triome on turn one, this immediately becomes a six casting cost creature. And then lay another uh, shock land or what have you to get the last uh, four out of it, you could easily cast this on turn two, guys. Um, so this, you may see that become a deck and become a thing. So uh, at least it's only a 4-4 that just has all these special abilities that's still able to be killed. But the blue with the Hexproof could actually make this creature become a serious issue. So I think this is a card to watch. There may be a special deck out there that plays this, and this could be an issue in the format to change how we deal with things with removal. So moving on, we have the Sylvan Anthems for two green. It says green creature you control, get plus one, plus one. Whenever green creature enters the battlefield, under your control, scry one. This is the best anthem I have ever seen. Uh, it's better than the white anthem, which only gives plus one, plus one. It's better than the black one that gives plus one, plus one to black. This is a green anthem. It gives plus two, plus one, plus one to green creatures. Plus you scry when you play a green creature. Elf ball, anybody? I mean, once again, that's for another video uh, that I'll talk about later. But this is going to be easy five ten dollar rare. I just, it's just too sweet. Will it see a lot of modern play? Probably not. But there'll be a lot of decks that just want to run it just because it's sweet, especially in EDH. Moving on. Hey, look, guys, it's Abundant Harvest. Remember this card? This was spoiled in the Mystic Archives in Strixhaven. Uh, for those of you who probably haven't looked at it, um, which I'm sure you all have. For a green, you choose land or non-land. Reveal top cards of your library to you find whatever it is you choose. That card goes to your hand, and the rest go on the bottom in a random order. Um, unfortunately, this is a common. Everybody had a lot of thinking that this not, might be a rare or something in the, in the set that it was previewed in, which made Abundant Harvest kind of expensive. But that died off real quick, um, and now it's down to more of a common price, even for the Mystical Archive. So, eh. Next, we have Scurry Oak. It is a green and two, covered in... Squirrels uh, is a tree folk with evolve. If you don't know what evolve is, whenever a creature comes into play that has more power or toughness than this creature, it gets a plus one plus one counter. And it's a one two. And it says whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on scurry oak, you may create a one one green squirrel token creature. So you can spit squirrels out with this. Um, so in a squirrel deck, yeah, it's going to be cool, but most squirrels are one ones anyway, so it won't evolve. So that's kind of awkward. Uh, it's three mana for a one two. I'm not going to see modern play because of that, unless there's a squirrel deck that's just the bomb diggity, which I don't think it will be, uh, unfortunately, because I think that'd be funny. Um, so probably pretty good in draft, but that's pretty much it, EDH Hallstar. Uh, we have Liquid Metal Torque, two colorless artifact that you can tap for a colorless. Uh, target only permanent becomes an artifact in addition to its other types till the end of turn. So this is a really cool mana rock. Because we don't get mana rocks anymore for two mana that don't come into play tapped. This comes into play untapped. You can use it. It unfortunately only makes colorless mana, but that may be okay in most decks. You know, we're used to having, you know, mana rocks that come into play and make colored mana, which is real powerful. This is only one step below that. Plus, it has an extra ability to turn things into artifacts, so you could actually turn something into artifact and maybe disenchant it or shatter it. Um... So I think it's got a lot of potential even for an uncommon, especially in EDH. Everybody needs those banner rocks, boys. So moving on. That's right, guys. We have a beautiful picture of a Zurin Orb reprint. Zero to cast artifact, sacrifice land, gain two life. All the way back from Ice Age. Boy, to the nostalgia. But to be honest, this doesn't really break anything, I don't think. Um, at least I hope not. Uh, but with that said, I'm glad to see this back in the modern just as a card because it's just not really a thing. And I, I think it's sweet. I love Zernor. Brings it back to the good old days. That's right, guys. Ephemerate got reprinted again. So Exile Target Creature Control. It goes back to the battlefield. Basically a blink spell with rebound, which means it gets it cast it twice on the next upkeep. Uh, yeah, if you don't know what this does, then you probably need to play more magic. Moving on. Soul Herder reprint. More blink spells. For those of you who don't know, it was in the last set of Modern Horizons. It's blue, white, and colorless 1-1. Uh, whenever a creature is exiled from the battlefield, this card gets a plus one plus one counter on it. Uh, and at the beginning of your end step, you may exile another creature card you control and then return that card to the battlefield under its control. Basically, it lets you blink something 
for free, which gives us a plus one, plus one counter. And you can re-trigger creature abilities as they leave the field and come back in. So there was a couple decks around this. Uh, they were hot for a while. They kind of went away. Um, this reprint might bring them back. And depending on the format of the modern era, uh, this may be a contender because it was pretty sweet back then. All right, guys, we've got a new one, Dragon's Rage Channeler. So for one rage, you get a 1-1. Uh, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you get to surveil one. It's pretty sweet. If you guys don't remember what surveil is, you look at the top card of your library, and you can put it in your graveyard if you want, if you don't like it. Otherwise, you can put it on top of your deck. Uh, but this does have Delirium, where if you have four or more cards of different types in your graveyard, the Channeler gets plus two, plus two, and has flying, and attacks each combat. So a one mana 3-3 three, three is pretty sweet. It's almost... Um, the good old 3-2 that flips. Um, I forget what it's called now. The blue one for one blue. And you reveal a... Yeah, anyway. Uh, but it's going to take you four turns to get there at least. Um, but in the right kind of deck with like lightning bolts and things like that, you could probably flip this thing. Or not really flip it, sorry. Um, you could probably get this to a 3-3 three, three flyer relatively quickly. And that might be good enough. So this could be a card to watch for. But I am iffy on it. Moving on, next we have Filet Essence. So for two black and one, exile target creature or planeswalker, you gain life equal to the number of counters on it. Um, this is great. Unfortunately, it is a sorcery, and it also costs three mana. So probably not going to see modern play. Um, might see a little sideboard action, maybe. Great in draft because it's a sweet removal spell, um, but just, have, just doesn't have the power level to get there. But would be a good option for the EDH players looking for those extra removal spells in their deck. Moving on, that's right, guys. Here's the card I was excited about when I seen it previewed. I almost shit myself. Ignoble Hierarch. One green for an 0-1 with the ability of Exalted, which is when one creature attacks, it gets plus one, plus one, and it taps to add green, red, black. Sound familiar? Like Noble Hierarch? What if we get a Hierarch like this for every green, for every color in the pie? Like, oh my god. How cool would that be? Noble Hierarch, it's only a $5 or $10 card now. It's been reprinted several times, but people just don't want to sell them for that because they, they, it's such a good card and it's been reprinted a lot. This being the first Hierarch of this color type, I think it's going to be very pricey. We're talking $20, $30, maybe even $40. Um, and especially since it's in Jun colors. Oh, fan me down. This is just too sweet. I mean whip this bad boy into a Mardu deck or something like that where you're playing things like, you know, Young Peasy and um, Dark Confidant and, oh, just the, the possibilities are endless. Oh, my God. I can't tell you. I, I, I mean, at this point, if they give us something like this, like another, if they give us one more Hierarch like this, you literally could just play a Hierarch deck because for every one you play, the creature is going to swing for more damage. It's it, it's bonkers. Um so I hope I don't get too out of hand, but yeah, really excited for this. This is pretty sweet. So moving on to our final card, we have Lonus, the Crypt Zoologist. So for a blue and a green, this guy's a one-two legendary creature, snake elf, snake elf scout. Blah, 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 blah. Whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you get to investigate. That means you can make a clue token, which for two mana and sacrificing it, you draw a card. Already sweet. It's basically a tireless tracker for two mana, except for when you cast creatures. Oh my god. Plus, it has the ability to tap, sacrifice X clues. Target opponent reveals X, the top X cards of their library, and you may put a non-land permanent card with mana value X or less from among them onto your battlefield under your control. That player then puts the rest on the bottom of their library in random order. This is a kill condition, guys. You could make a clue deck that just does nothing but investigate, lay this guy, protect him for a turn or two because green and blue has all the protection spells. Everything from counter spells to hex proof to, you know, veiled silence and all, silence and all that stuff. Just and, and then just tap, sack, and just get the best thing out of their deck and just hammer them with it. Uh, I think this card shows lots of promise. It's going to be a card that has to be dealt with. Um, the only drawback to this card is probably the fact it's in blue and green. Even though that's some of the best co the best colors for protection, only because their creatures aren't that great. But now having eight eight high arcs that you can play, that's right there. Eight clues, along with the fact that when you get a couple of them on the field, you can swing and make your creatures huge. Like this may be the card for the high arc deck. Heck, who knows? So 
with that said, guys, that's the last card for us. I know it went, I went pretty long today. We're at 40 minutes already. I really appreciate you guys coming through, watching the video, checking it out. Um, we're halfway through the spoilers almost. I can't wait to see what else that we get. I'm really excited and stoked. So I'm going to let you get out of here, guys. Remember, like, subscribe, tell your friends. In-store play comes off this weekend. Hallelujah. Uh, with that said, remember, support your local vendor, game store, LGS, whoever it is you buy from. And as always, let's create a nice, kind environment where people love to play Magic Hangout and be friends. So until next time, guys, remember to be kind. So with that said, this is your captain speaking, and I'll see you in the next spoiler list.